Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice. If you're new here, thank you very much for stopping by. So in today's video, um, in the comment section of one of my videos, someone asked me to do a video outline of you know topics that you'll see in professional exams. So basically, I am just going, in this video, I'm going to be doing a topic outline for each department under medical laboratory science. What you should expect in your first professional exam. Now. Let's go into let's get into it. A very brief disclaimer now. The topics I'm going to be discussing in this video, they are not the standard, let me say that, because it still depends on what you were taught. If I mention some of these topics and you were probably not taught, that does that that does not mean they will bring it. It's going to still be based on what you're taught and well, based on what you've been taught in school or based on the curriculum set in your school so it might vary depending on some things it's not the standard it's not the gold standard this will just help you have an idea of what you should expect during your first professional exam the topics basically you should expect during your first professional exam that's practical related now I outlined some most of them now I'm going to be starting with hematology now the very first thing for hematology is blood group blood grouping now the blood grouping you are going to most likely see they won't really give you forward in case even if they're going to give you forward grouping they will tell you okay do forward and reverse grouping maybe they will give you like four samples and tell you to do four forward grouping for the first three and maybe reverse grouping for the next four so one thing you will definitely see under hematology is blood grouping forward and reverse blood grouping you might also see questions relating to PCB and they won't just give you PCB alone, they'll put um, hemoglobin estimation and red cell indices. So remember then your red cell in your red cell indices, there are calculations on how to calculate to get your red cell indices. So you will not just see a question, just find the PCB of this person alone. So just know your PCB, know your uh, HB estimation, also know your red cell indices, the formula like the MCHC over the MCH, know the formulas to get those answers and now that is that for um hematology depending i don't think for first professional exam they don't really put cross match i think cross match is in second professional exam and and going forward so for me for our side that was basically what was innate for hematology then for microbiology which is they will tell you preparation of cultural media so if, if when you come to microbiology you should not be prepared per cultural media now that preparation of cultural media they might tell you they'll provide you with depending they'll provide you with um, agar most of the time they can say they won't just tell you to do normal am like normal nutrient agar to be things like maybe blood agar or cvba so they were provided they already have had the molten agar so maybe you just have to mix your blood and also write your calculations and also report it to know how to report it if you're calculating not to calculate properly if you're calculating things like um if you want to write 10 meals like don't just write 10 we should just write everything exactly how, how it's meant to be basically so your calculation and your reporting for microbiology and also your plate because at, at the end of the day they'll tell you to put your plate that's your molten egg and whatever your whole mixture into a plate and leave it on the table so also do the presentation of your plate how your plate looks is there bubbles in it did they gel well and other kind of thing did your blood mix properly they are going to look at those kind of things so preparation of cultural media another thing you can see on the microbiology is plate reading as far as possible now depending on the materials you're provided with you'll be asked to do identify organisms on your plate so you already have a plate on the table probably it could be a, it could be an organism it could just be one like a pure it could be a pure culture or it could be mixed with maybe staff and e. coli or i think the most common one is always staff and e. coli for me per se it could be staff by um e. coli it could be klebsiella depending on what you people learned in your school so it could be mixed with and they'll tell you identify as far as possible and most of the time even if it's going to be a mixed group i think most of the time they want to do a GNB and a gram positive and a GPC and a GNB. Do you understand? So if you have catalase test, you have this, you know, you just do identify as far as possible, basically with the materials provided. Then chemical coming to chemical pathology. Now chemical pathology, one thing for us was urine analysis. Now the urine analysis, you know, no more urine analysis that we're taught for our first professional exam was that the the normal qualitative analysis of urine that's qualitative analysis of urine where you have to do 
using benedict solution stock solution you know those ones that you have to identify okay glucose present i cannot forget because it's like a table you have to do test for carbohydrates then add something something add two drops of very benedict solution like you basically have to write the procedure then you say okay the solution turned from yellow to blue meaning carbohydrate is post uh, carbohydrate is present this one is present so qualitative analysis of urine that's one thing that you most likely see in chemical pathology another thing you will see is creatinine estimation that they could it might not be creatinine tech it could be something else but anything that it might have to whatever you might have to do you have to use a spec or a colorimeter basically they'll just give you a, it could be creatinine it could be uh i think creatinine was what they gave us but it could be anything basically it could be any whatever the you actually you see if it wasn't creatinine the if they didn't teach you creatinine estimation maybe in your time what they actually taught you was um bilirubin estimation i don't know if they ever taught bilirubin for 400 but maybe if it was bilirubin if it was urea whatever estimation so they could give you an estimation of anything that you have to use maybe colorimeter or a spec a spectral photometer now the fourth the fourth part or the fourth and final part which is histopathology now one thing about histopathology is they will definitely give you staining and then for first professional exam i think the most popular the most common staining they would like to give you is h and e that's emaptozoline and eosin staining so know your h and e procedure very very well and they might also give you something on decalcification you know they'll give you a decalcifying fluid and ask you to find the end point was the whatever was done is I can't remember exactly about the exact way the question might be in, but decalcification basically. Then also for us, they gave us this Van Jensen staining. So basically, one thing about is to is staining, and I don't know if they most of the time they just tell you to stain, and then they would, they will view this whatever slide you've stained at the end of it. I don't know they, when you've left the exam or the exam officers will probably view it. But they will just the old mark. They won't tell you. Unlike probably my gram, that's even a second professional exam when they will tell you, okay, let us see what you're seeing under the microscope. So that's more of a second that's final professional exam procedure. During first professional exam, they don't really give a lot of that's a lot of microscope like to the end. Let's see to the end. Let's identify what you're seeing or parasite. Let's see this or that because first and foremost, you're doing all for. Four department or you're doing all four departments and you're going to have six questions the first question is usually spot spot tests like spot tests then i think one of it is usually spot test then they can want to put in mycology or bacteriology and shift parasitology depending on what micro most of the time could have two questions because one would be bacteriology which is culture media then they can give you parasitology something like okay stool analysis how do you analyze um, using formal ITA method, stool analysis or malaria parasite, depending on what they've actually taught you in parasitology or if your school is a place where they teach you mycology, your sixth question might be mycology, but it's always six questions all you know. So I thank you very much. I hope I've been able to shed a little light on what to expect while on topics to expect for your first professional exam. Thank you very much. And if you do have any questions, please put them down in the comment section down below. So thank you very much.